This is a podcast from the Business Times. Much is wonderful about Singapore's public housing. For many housing and development board or HDB flat owners, one great aspect of owning an HDB flat is wealth creation. There's a large pool of HDB resale flat bars and an active market. And HDB resale flat prices have risen strongly post-COVID. The resale price index rose by 43% between first quarter 2020 and second quarter 2024. Welcome to Property BT, a podcast series by The Business Times. I'm Senior Correspondent Leslie Yee, and I'll be your host as we gather insights on all things Singapore property to help you in your property investment journey. Let's get to grips with what is driving the HDB resale flat market with Christine Sun, Chief Researcher and Strategist of Consultancy Orange Tea Group. Welcome, Christine. Hello, everyone. Christine, I think there's much buzz in the HDB resale market. Many people desire to live in HDB homes because many HDB estates have good transport connectivity and comprehensive amenities. Let's understand where demand for HDB resale flats is coming from. Christine, who are the buyers of HDB resale flats and why has demand been strong? Demand has started picking up ever since the pandemic started. It's mainly because of the construction delays for the BTO flats. So that's why many of these people, they have shifted from buying BTO flats to resale flats. So currently, we are seeing different buyers from different markets. Like for example, one of them is definitely the first-timers because the government has given uh, many subsidies to eligible first-timers while purchasing their resale flats. As they complete more flats, that means the construction pick up for BTO flats. We have also seen many of these first-timers, they have shifted back to the BTO flat. Another group will be the private downgraders. That means they own a private property and they subsequently sold their private properties and they have shifted to uh, HDB resale flats. So some of these people have done so because after the pandemic, property prices, especially for the landed properties and condominiums, prices have been rising. So because of that, many of them, they have exceeded the market and they have uh, decided to downsize to a HDB resale flat. We have also seen another group of people coming into a HDB resale market, which are the HDB flat owners. Maybe they are shifting from smaller HDB flats. They have decided to upgrade to a bigger HDB flat. Christine, you talked about how there are more BTO flats being built, right? So will the building of these more BTO flats really dampen demand for HDB resale flats? Do you see that happening? Mm, right now, we do see that the application rates for the BTO flats have been dropping. So that actually is quite a good news for these young people because they have a higher chance of getting these BTO flats. So with this, I believe that some demand will gradually be shifted to the BTO flat market, especially since the government right now has pushed out a lot of very good locations. And moving forward in October, they'll be also launching plus flats, which are very attractive. So we do see that perhaps some demand may start to come down slightly in the upcoming months. Yes, I guess you mentioned at the other end of the spectrum, you have older Singaporeans owning private homes bought some time back, probably sitting on big profits. And I suppose trading a private home for an HDB home is great for retirement adequacy. It frees up a lot of funds, right? So actually, how big a factor are private home downgraders in the HDB resale market? Based on the data that we have, we do not really know how big are these private home downgraders. But what we can do is that uh, we can infer from maybe past trends. Let's say, for example, ever since the government implemented the 15-month wait-out period, that means they have to wait 15 months after selling their private properties before they can buy a HDB resale flat, uh, we noticed that the number of million-dollar transactions dropped quite noticeably. And uh, we also noticed that for demand for some of these bigger flats, demand has also dropped slightly. So we can infer that perhaps this group of buyers, they could be these private downgraders. And ever since the first batch of maybe private downgraders, they have completed the 15-month wait-out period, we started seeing again an uptick in terms of the number of million-dollar transactions. And in fact, price is pretty high. So we can infer from these trends that perhaps they are the ones who are pushing you know, some of these high-end transactions for the HDB resale market. Christine, I suppose it's good that there's housing mobility in Singapore, right? I mean, one can move from an HDB home to a private home back to an HDB home. However, I suppose ex-private homeowners competing for resale homes does make it harder for some young families to buy resale units. So 
in, in your view, do you think there's any need to cool demand further for HDB homes from private home owners? Mm, it really depends on what these buyers are looking for in the HDB resale market because if you look at the million dollar transactions it's still less than 5% of the total transactions and the good thing is that the government right now is actually pushing out many affordable very good locations BTO flats for people to choose so there is still a possibility with, with first timers going back to the BTO market then for the other people who want to buy resale flats they could have other choices with some of this demand being taken away. Christine, uh, you have mentioned about these million-dollar HDB flat transactions. As a news media, we sometimes struggle to get readership for some of the stuff we put out, but there's hardly any problems when we report on record-breaking prices fetch for sale of HDB resale flats. I think recently there was a five-room flat at Margaret Drive near Dawson Estate that fetched nearly $1.73 million Singapore dollars. And, and as you point out, only a small proportion of HDB resale flats transact for over a million dollars, albeit there has been a growth in such transactions. I think over the second quarter, there were about $236 million or more HDB resale flat transactions. In your view, does it make a lot of financial sense to pay top dollar for a much coveted HDB resale flat? Well, I think it depends on what the buyers pack the price of the resale flats. For example, if they compare it with a private property of a similar size on location, perhaps they will say that this price that they are paying for the HDB resale flat is still attractive because for a private property of equal attributes, the price could easily be two to three times more. Let's say, for example, if you are looking at maybe a fire room flat in Queenstown, right now it costs maybe about $1 million. But if you are talking about private property, maybe a resale condo or even a new condominium, it will easily cost more than $2 million. But if they were to pack it with, let's say, a BTO flat, then the person will probably pay about maybe 600000 dollars for the same flat. So that will be maybe about half of the price. But of course, I think the concern is that not all flats can command that kind of high price. Because um, usually, if you look at the million dollar transactions, most of them are either very big units, high floor units, or they are near downtown or city fringe areas. But of concern is that right now, there are more and more million dollar flat transactions that are in the suburban areas. And some of them are foreign flats. And right now, I think the following flat, million dollar transactions have also been rising quite fast. So it means that maybe some buyers may already view paying a million dollars for some of these flats to be a norm. And they could even be overpaying for some of these flats. Interesting. I, I guess we should be concerned or at least look out for situations of people perhaps overpaying for their flats. But as you also point out, the pricey HDB resale flat is generally way cheaper than a new or resale leasehold private condominium unit. Do you think that some people paying lofty prices for HDB resale flats causes a lot of people to have unease and kind of feel that HDB resale flats are unaffordable? Mm, well, I think that if people just look at the headline news, then of course they could be alarmed that prices, especially uh, million dollar flats are escalating. And in fact, the million dollar transactions, they are getting pricier and pricier as well. But I think it's also important for buyers to take note of what is the average transacted price in uh, every location so that they can make an informed decision. By and large, most of the other areas around Singapore, I think the median price is still hovering at about maybe 500 over 1,000 or so. If we take that into perspective, then perhaps that will cool down some of these expectations that they have in the market. And of course, if they are looking for maybe slightly more affordable units, they can still look at other areas like, for example, maybe in the non-mature estates, maybe a unit that's slightly further away from the MRT station. There are still many of these affordable resale flats that are in the market right now. Good advice there, so I suppose it's always to stay calm and not get too excited. Um, still to come, what are the chances of a price correction in the HDB resale market? Money Hacks now comes to you every Monday. Get useful financial tips every week. How much to save? What to invest in? Howie Lim asks the experts. So you have the answers. Money Hacks by the Business Times. Every Monday, go to bt.sg slash moneyhacks. 
or wherever you get your podcasts. And now, back to Property BT from the Business Times. Welcome back to Property BT. I'm Leslie Yee. Property markets have cycles. Yes, home prices generally rise as incomes rise and development costs increase. Still, occasionally housing markets may have downturns. Hmm, I wonder if the HDB resale market is immune from price correction. I remember for quite some time back, in the not-too-distant past, HDB resale flat prices were largely flat. Christine, what is the possibility of HDB resale flat prices correcting? Uh, I think that's a very good question because right now, because of the past few years of price increases, people tend to forget that properties' prices, they move in cycles. So the last time when prices corrected or undergone a period of stagnation was after the 2013 when TDSR was first implemented. So when we look at the price index from 2013 all the way to 2020, it was around uh, six to seven years of prices did come down for certain areas and then stagnated for many areas. Thereafter, during the pandemic, when there was this construction delays and many of these people, they shifted from buying BTO flats to HDB resale flats. That's when we see prices escalating for over the past few years. And right now, I think it's starting to stabilize. Therefore, property market do move in cycles. And the current up cycle was driven by special circumstances. And right now, because the government is pushing out more BTO flats, so supply is going to build up. And the other risk is that there could be another global economic crisis that may affect the market as well. So like for example, it happened in 1995, which was the Asian financial crisis. During that period, prices did undergo another round of correction and uh, stagnation for almost 10 years. And it started picking up only just before the property boom in 2007. So these are some things that buyers have to take note of. Christine, very useful to help us recap the history of some of these price movements. I think the TDSR you referred to refers to the total debt servicing ratio. From your view, do, do you expect to see any policy tweaks to temper HDB resale flat prices? Mm, I think right now the government has already introduced quite a few things to maybe slow down the pace of price growth over the past two years. One of them will be to reduce the LTV, which is the loan to value ratio, and as well as this 15 month wait out period for private home owners. So at least that helped to slow down the pace of price growth for at least about a year plus. And that actually allows supply to build in. So I guess that for right now, they are putting forth a lot of a new supply in the market as well as many of this new supply is going to come out in very good locations. I think that will give some assurance to Singaporeans that they do, do not need to rush to pay that top dollar for that particular flat that they are looking for. Indeed. So the HDB will continue being busy to build more homes, build them in good locations, and hopefully housing demand will be satisfied. Currently, the monthly household income ceiling to buy a BTO home for a couple is 14000 Singapore dollars. Christine, should help be given to people who cannot buy BTO units, such as those who bust the income ceiling by relaxing the eligibility criteria to buy BTO homes? Well, I think that if the government has the means to help as many Singaporeans, I'm sure they will do so. But right now, I think their concern is still to help maybe middle income or the lower income Singaporeans to get their first home first. So what we do see is that application rates is coming down, but it's still not at the level where they can quickly increase the pool of buyers again. If let's say, for example, they increase the income ceiling for this group of buyers, then that will mean that demand from the other young couples, those lower or middle income, they could potentially be affected because with more demand coming in, that will also mean that they have to wait longer for the BTO flats. So I guess if you look at the bigger scheme of things, they want to try to meet the needs of these uh, lower to middle income Singaporeans first before they look into maybe other groups of people. Yes, I suppose it's always about getting the balance right, right? So we want to expand eligibility so that more people can buy BTO homes, but we also have to be mindful of perhaps which groups may need more help in terms of buying such units. Christine, let's pivot back to the HDB resale market and specifically an owner of a much sought-after HDB home. Imagine you are a BTO owner of a choice unit who has met the minimum occupation period. 
Should you rush to sell the home for a windfall gain? Christine, how would you advise a homeowner who's considering selling a sought-after HDB resale flat? Well, I guess that because HDB flat prices have been rising quite quickly over the past few years, so it's pretty attractive for some of these homeowners to sell and then after that they can upgrade to another place. But I think right now, one of the serious considerations for some of these homeowners will be to look at the replacement cost. For example, they sell their flat for, let's say, 800000 or $1 million. They may need to take up a bigger loan. Because right now, uh, if you were to buy a new condominium in the suburban area, it will easily cost about 2 to $2.5 million. So that means that they will likely incur another million of uh, another loan. So they have to assess whether at their age, at their financial position, is it possible to take up a bigger loan? Christine, I, I guess, I think you referred to the financial means in terms of the considerations to upgrade from a HDB home to a condo unit. For the people with the financial means, is it a no-brainer to trade an HDB home for a condo unit? Mm, well, I guess that, of course, for a lot of Singaporeans, they do aspire to stay in condominiums because of the facilities. Sometimes they may want to shift for privacy or they want to get to a good school or to shift nearer to the workplace. If they were to sell the HDB resale flat and then they do not have to top up a lot of money, then perhaps that would be a very good suggestion. Our HDB homes and estates are constantly being improved. So think twice about giving up an HDB home. Also be careful not to overpay in the HDB resale market even if you have pressing housing needs. There's a choice of units available at different price points. Meanwhile, we'll have to see how the new changes to lower the loan-to-value for HDB loans and increase housing grants for lower to middle-income households impact the HDB resale market. Thank you to my guest, Christine Sun of Orange Tea. Thank you. That's it for Property BT this time. Join us next time where we look at HDB's new Standard Plus and Prime model for BTO projects. Will Plus and Prime flats that come with tighter restrictions be popular with BTO applicants? Does the longer minimum occupation period of Plus and Prime BTO homes kill the dream of upgrading to a private home? I'm Leslie Yee. Thank you for listening and happy property hunting. This is a podcast by The Business Times. Find more BT podcasts at businesstimes.com.sg slash podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is meant to provide general information only. SPH Media accepts no liability for loss arising from any reliance on the podcast or use of third parties' products and services. Please consult professional advisors for independent advice.